some new stories from Ethiopia and Sudan. Before that, uh, a new story from France where Emmanuel Macron has been re-elected for another term. He has won the presidential election held there. He got 58.2% votes. His challenger, uh, Le Pen, got 41.8% votes. So, Emmanuel Macron is president of France for an other term. Now, uh, four new stories. Firstly, we have Sudan, where 168 persons have been killed in violence in Darfur. Secondly, we have uh, some pictures for you shared by OLA back news sources. Some ENDF soldiers have been taken prisoner by the members of Oromo Liberation Army. Third news story is a very interesting one where a research team has uncovered a map drawn in 1849, map of Ethiopia. Uh, this map is being used by some pro Tigray sources, news sources, to back Tigray's claim over Western Tigray. Humaira Vulkai Sagade. We'll have a detailed look at this map and the professor who uh, uncovered this map. Uh, is he a neutral researcher? Who is he? And fourthly, uh, some meetings have been held in the US between US aid officials and Ethiopian uh, finance minister. What was discussed there? Gata Choreda also responded to the news of this uh, meeting a few hours ago. Firstly, we are Sudan. Once again, ethnic violence in Darfur. This time, the area is western Darfur. Here, around 168 people have been killed. And around 100 injured. Most of these casualties uh, are being reported from Kirinik, which is in West Darfur. Violence started with an individual altercation, exchange of hot words, uh, confrontation between two persons. Then it led to large-scale confrontation between uh, Arab and Masalit tribes and that is what we have been seeing in the past as well since the start of uh, uh, ethnic violence uh, in Darfur. I think it started uh, in the early years of uh, uh, 2000 uh, when Umar al-Bashir was the ruler of uh, Sudan and then we saw the Janjaweed militias backed by government forces they were heavily involved in Darfur uh, and uh, around 300,000 persons were killed in ethnic violence in Darfur and more than 2 million, around 2.5 million were displaced. Omar al-Bashir was removed from power. He is uh, facing a trial. He is wanted by International Criminal Court but there is no peace in Darfur. UN peacekeepers have withdrawn from Darfur viewers. I read a new story last year. Uh, they started their withdrawal from Darfur in January last year. People protested. They wanted uh, UN peacekeepers to remain, but UN decided to close its peacekeeping mission in Darfur. And violence is far from over. Uh, after a few days, we see clashes between uh, Arab and Masalit uh, factions and hundreds are killed uh, almost in each bout of these uh, incidents, in this, this violence. Uh, second, a second new story is from Oromia where a military campaign against Oromo Liberation Army is underway. 
Wale has shared some pictures of newly captured government soldiers. You can see pictures on your screen. These are soldiers, government soldiers, soldiers of Ethiopian National Defense Force. Wale has uh, taken them prisoner. So operation is underway and reportedly in coming days, the operation is set to intensify. So the government is not in a mood to put an end to this operation. What we have learned is that uh, uh, in coming days, uh, in this week, we could see intensified efforts uh, to eliminate Romo Liberation Army, especially in North Shore and West Shore. In two zones, we could see a uh, uh, new phase of this operation. Government is trying to launch and other uh, uh, intensified operation in these two zones. We'll keep you updated. So far, we have not seen any major OLA commander arrested. Uh, we have not seen OLA withdraw from Central Oromia. Uh, yes, fighting is being reported. We are not sure about government's gains. What are government's gains so far? What has government gained so far in this operation? We don't know. Government is not speaking. Oromia regional government, Ethiopian federal government, they are not briefing uh, what they have achieved from this operation so far. Thirdly, viewers, uh, a map is being shared by some pro Tigray news sources uh, to back Tigray's claim over Western Tigray, Humaira Vulkai Sagar. It is being said that a research team led by Professor John Nyson has uncovered this map. The map was drawn in 1849 by Germans. The map shows Ethiopia. Uh, it shows uh, that uh, Vulkayet is not part of uh, uh, Amhara on this map. On this map, Vulkayet is part of Tigray. And Volo is a separate area as well, which is claimed by Oromos. So on the basis of this map, it is being claimed by Tigray-backed uh, news sources that, uh, that this map is an evidence that in 1849, uh, this uh, disputed zone, Western Tigray, was part of Tigray, not Amhara. Now, what is the position of Amhara region? Amhara region says that uh, boundaries of uh, Ethiopian regions uh, were redrawn by EPRDF government. Uh, after uh, uh, 1992, uh, 1991. And uh, after that, uh, constitution was uh, approved, 1995 constitution, which was also uh, uh, made by uh, EPRDF. And uh, during that redesigning of uh, regional boundaries, uh, Volkai, Sagade, Humaira were made parts of Tigray. But originally they were part of Amhara region. So that is what Amhara region claims. Now Tigray has a map from 1849. Amhara region uh, could come up with a map from 17 something. It will keep on going. You will have to sit and talk. You will have to sit and resolve this issue through negotiations. Otherwise, both sides will keep on sharing new evidence. And secondly, John Nyson, the professor uh, at uh, a Belgian university, uh, has close ties with Macaulay University as well. A uh, few days ago, he led a research into a total uh, casualties uh, in Tigray conflict. He claimed, his, his research claimed that uh, uh, half a million uh, persons had been killed due to Tigray conflict. The research was rejected by uh, government-backed news sources, Ethiopian government. 
Amhara government, uh, they see John Nyson as a pro Tigray. And now John Nyson has shown this map that it was uh, made uh, by Germans in uh, 1849. My position is that this issue can be resolved through negotiations and talks. There must be a solution acceptable to both the parties. Otherwise, uh, this, this tension will continue. Lastly, viewers, uh, in the US, we have seen some meetings between US aid uh, officials and Ethiopian finance minister Ahmed Shide is visiting US these days. He has held meetings with uh, World Bank IMF uh, uh, officials too and he held a meeting with Samantha Power as well, head of USAID. After that, USAID released a statement. USAID was severely criticized by Ethiopian government last year. It was uh, accused of backing uh, TPLF. And when Samantha Power visited uh, Ethiopia last year, PM Abi did not meet her. He gave the cold shoulder to Samantha Power. Uh, now, Ethiopian government is in need of money, it is in need of funds. So, we are seeing engagement between USAID officials and uh, Ethiopian finance ministry officials. Uh, after the meeting between Amma Shide and Samantha Power, USAID released a statement. Again, USAID is saying that uh, there must be accountability for human rights violations committed in Ethiopia. There must be sustained delivery of aid to Tigray. Rising food and fertilizer prices are a matter of concern for the entire world. So, USAID is definitely sending a message to Ethiopian government that it must ensure sustained and sufficient delivery of aid to Tigray. Two days ago, US government announced more than 300 million US dollars uh, additional humanitarian assistance for Ethiopia. And much of it will be spent uh, through USAID reportedly. So, USAID uh, uh, is a key organization. Ethiopian government will have to improve its ties with USAID. But USAID wants uh, some actions from the government. It wants delivery of aid to Tigray, which is uh, sustained, which is uh, sufficient, which is unfettered. And we have seen uh, US government officials uh, calling upon Ethiopian government to resume, to restore basic services in Tigray like banking service, uh, telecommunication services and electricity. Let's see. Uh, I, I think in coming days we could see restoration of these services in Tigray. US pressure is... Uh, being exerted on Ethiopian government and the government is in need of some loans, some grants. So we know that Ethiopian economy is in shambles. Thank you for watching.